What's up guys and welcome to my channel Flame Weaver 4. In this issue 59 from Build the DeLorean from Back to the Future, we are going to be doing the bulkhead details. Right, so the bulkhead details include one pipe, a fan, a cable, uh, there's a there's a couple of brackets, another tab, another longer cable, uh, a twin cable which you've got two green LEDs in it, and then there's a bracket, and then there's also a few screws. So you need to have three AP screws, you will need to have five FP screws, two BM screws, and you will also need to have four DM screws. Right, so after you've taken out all of your pieces and made sure that they're there, you will need to start with attaching the pipe, which is 59A, under the large pipe on the right of the flux capacitor box and push this into the upper bulkhead. So basically, all you need to do is push that pipe into that as shown here. So that just goes underneath that gold pipe there, as you can see, it just goes down. It's very detailed, actually, kind of really impressed with that, to be fair, really like that. Right, so the next thing we need to do is a little bit fiddly, guys. It's a bit of an annoying thing to do, and mine kept popping out. So with these little tabs, you need to feed that long piece of pipe into that. So you will need to push the other bracket 59E onto the end of the cable 59D and then slot those into the bulkhead like so. But they will keep coming out. So if you want to super glue that in, I suggest just doing that now because I got a bit frustrated. I, I didn't super glue mine in and I tried to attach it to the bulkhead and then they just kept falling out. So this is how the pipes need to look when you've installed the pipes. So you will need to have the shorter pipe going from the fan underneath the flux capacitor and then from the bottom of the fan, obviously it's, it loops round and goes underneath. You will need to leave the little tab on the right free to put that other pipe on once it's connected to the bulkhead, but don't do that for now, so just stay away from that. Right, so the next thing we need to do is put those LEDs in the back. They just push in the back and then held in by a little tab holding down the wires, as you can see the green and white wire there. So they just push in, they're really easy, you don't need any super glue to do those, they will actually just push in. They're not the best of things, obviously, um, because, you know, people have done modifications to theirs, but I, I just kind of, the carpet for me was enough, so I'm going to keep it standard, I'm going to keep it like that. I really wish it would flux the capacitor, but, you know, it, we're going to have to just leave that at, at this stage, so... Right, so once you've done that, you will need to attach the bulkhead, uh, the back bulkhead to the main frame. So that is accomplished by some FP screws, as you can see here. You don't need to attach anything at this point. You do need to make sure, obviously, them purple things do not pop off, which mine kept doing, which is really annoying. Uh, and it should look a little bit like that, as it does in this um, close-up view that I am showing you guys uh, right now. So uh, make sure you push your gold, well I say gold, make sure you push that silver pipe at the bottom just running beside the chair into place because that will be a very annoying, that one there. Uh, and then also you will need to attach that uh, at the back there with an FP screw also, okay? I'm going to tell you the fiddly bit, it's going to be putting those wires into the chassis because I've actually already done this. As you already know, I do voiceovers so I know the bit coming up is very, very frustrating. The rest of it is kind of like just following the book and putting the pipes in, uh, so that's quite easy. Right, but let's get on to this next section. So you want to put the uh, wires into place. You need to put the 16 into the 16. You need to put the... Um, you also need to put that big block, which is F and R together like so, so that that's all clipped into place. And then you're just kind of linking the wires up. So this is where we want to hope everything works. Once you've done that, you will just need to attach that small pipe that we attached at the back, uh, which is 59A, and then push that down into the bottom section. Uh, as you can see, I've just pushed in pipes in. So you just follow the diagram here. So you can see those pipes there. That is 49D um, and 49C and 49E. And then once they're in place, you need to push in 53E, um, 53F and then on top of that you need 53D and 57J as you can see that run along the side of the passenger side there. Right so after you've done that you will need to, to plug in number 19 and number 22 uh, of the cables into that section and as you do it kind of, kind of just hold it in place as you can see here just hold it down into place and then plug them in. They are very difficult to do. I found a lot of difficulty in doing this um, so I kind of cut it off, plugged them in, because obviously there's no point of you guys seeing me frustrated. Just plug them in as you can in the number sequence. The numbers obviously face on the outside, 
and then just push it down into place. Make sure the wires don't get snagged and just be really careful and take your time. Right, so then after you've done that, you will need to attach um, the the steering column. So remember, make sure that that steering column lines up. It doesn't attach by any screws, which is actually baffles me completely. And you also need to add that bracket uh, with a couple of BM screws as well, just to hold that um, steering into place. Once you've done that, you will need to go from the top of the chassis um, into uh, the obviously main frame with some DM screws and that secure it. So it's all nice and secure as you can see they're giving it a little bit of a wobble to make sure that that is secure. Right, once you've done this, do not wait until the next issue comes. Put some batteries in this bad boy, which I have already done. We're just gonna struggle to take this cover off and show you. So make sure you get some decent batteries. I've got a few energizers in there, as you can see. If, you want, if you're not sure you don't want corrosion, obviously just take the batteries out every time you're not using them because that's probably the best thing to do at this stage. Right, so what we're gonna do now is we're just going to just kind of give you an overview of the lights. So we need to test the lights to make sure the lights are working. We're just going to grab the magazine, get the magazine out of the way. So just bear with us. Guys, are you loving this build so far? Because I really am. I can't wait until this upper frame in this frame section comes. Uh, because I have been watching and following, obviously, the Facebook site. And, you know, it's it's just amazing like how, my, how much um, detail people have gone into making modifications and making this the model that it is today. I mean, although we've got this model as it is now, how it stands, it is very good. Uh, a very good build. Some of the things are... You know, need some tweaking and stuff like that. But there's the, the amount of effort some people have gone into is is crazy, right? So if, as you can see, the buttons on the side where the um, one, two, three to like five are, I think it was, they are where you turn the lights on. So I'm just going to switch my lights off, just so we can see it all lit up. So this is kind of just a test to make sure that all the lights are working. So here we go. Right, so we're just switching them on and just go running through them. And then just make sure, so you basically should have lights for the flux capacitor. You should also have lights for the main bit that says 88, because obviously that's a bit what lights up as well. You then will also need to have the the back bit where the obviously the miles per hour, that will need to light up there for you. And you will also need... Um, to have the what they call a Christmas tree, which is the two green LEDs light up there as well. So if you have those lighting up, then you are on a winner. Right, so it looks really good, doesn't it, guys? I mean, it looks very detailed. Obviously, the only thing that I guess lets it down is that it's not fluxing uh, and it's just a bright blue light, which which is which is kind of a disappointment, to be fair, isn't it? The, the flux is not... Yeah, to me, it just doesn't... You know, it doesn't have that wow factor about it. It's it's good. The lighting is great. I mean, the LEDs are good. I don't have too much bleed from the uh, dials and stuff, which I thought I would do. But it's just that flux. I mean, really, it's just I'm gonna have to do something about that. I know that I probably should be doing it at this stage, but you know, I can't. I can't go into it right now. I just I'm just still getting over my disappointment from it. So. Uh, are going to leave it at that so just make sure you switch it off like I said if you want to you can take the batteries out you don't have to but I would recommend uh, doing that if you're going to leave it standing for a long time right so guys please join me in the next issue for the upper frame it's going to be amazing I can't wait it's going to make this car look like an actual car now uh, thanks for watching if you haven't subscribed already please do so and I'll see you on the next one bye bye